please forgive me, Jesus. And try me one more time. I have sinned against you, Lord. I admit that I've done wrong. Oh, Lord, I'm just like the prodigal son. Lord, and I'm on my way back home. Lord, and I'm down on my bended knee, begging you to save this soul of mine. So please forgive me, Jesus, and try me one more time. It's so wonderful to have a Savior who forgive us of all of our sin. It's so good to know He'll forgive us over and over and over again. Lord, to sin, it is human, but to forgive is so divine. If you just say, please forgive me, Jesus, and try me one more time. Against you, Lord, I admit that I've done wrong. Oh, Lord, I'm just like the prodigal son. Lord, and I'm on my way back home. Lord, and I'm down on my bended knee, begging you to save this soul of mine. So please forgive me, Jesus. And try me one more time. Let the church say amen. amen. If you love God, say amen again. Amen. God is good how often? All the time. And all the time. God. Find somebody nearby this morning and say, neighbor, neighbor. God, loves you, God loves you. And I do too. And, I do too. and if you love, me, you love me as much as I love you, I love you. then nothing can break. I love him too. Amen. Certainly, we want to give God a praise this morning and thank him for all the things that he is currently doing in our lives. I'm looking around at some blessed folk in this place on this morning. Just in case you didn't know you was blessed, let me remind you, you are blessed of the Lord on this morning. I know you may not be where you want to be, may not have what you want to have just yet, but guess what? God still decided to smile on you this morning. You're in your right mind, count that as a blessing. You got clothes on your back, you can count that as a blessing. When you flip that switch this morning, your lights came on, guess what? You can count that as a blessing. No matter who you are, no matter what condition you find yourself in, no matter how low you may feel, guess what? You're still blessed because God has smiled on us continually and we thank him for that this morning. We thank all of those that are here with us. We thank those of you that are watching us via live stream. We thank you for tuning in to be with us this morning. We pray God's blessings upon you. I just want to take this time to thank each and every single one of you all on yesterday uh, for the love that was shown to me and my wife on yesterday and uh, for all of those that came up and set up and everything. We just want to let you know that we're appreciative for the labor of love that you showed to us on yesterday and we'll thank God for being here on this morning now I think you all I think you're going to be interested I'm doing something for the month of September and it's going to be on our favorite topic something that I know we all like to talk about you know um, so we're going to get to that if you um, go this morning to the book of John uh, the book of the gospel of St. John chapter number 12 and we're going to begin reading at verse number one and conclude reading at verse number eight. The grass withers and the flower thereof shall fade away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Y'all, there was a woman that had went into the grocery store and as she was coming out of the grocery store and she was coming to her car and she got to the car and she noticed that there were three men sitting in her car. And she, Lord said, she took out a piece and she got to the door. She said, y'all get out of my car. If y'all don't get out of my car, I know something. And they didn't take a second thought. They got out of the car just like the woman had told them to. And so y'all, the lady got in the car and uh, yo, of course she was a little agitated, a little on edge because the people were in her vehicle. And after a while, she kept wondering why she couldn't get the key in the ignition. And Lord, she figured out it wasn't even her car. <laughs> Amen, amen. 
Amen. So make sure it's your car when you get in the car. Amen. Amen. Matthew, John chapter 12. John chapter 12, beginning at verse number one. The Bible reads like this. Jesus, therefore, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they made him a supper there, and Martha was serving, but Lazarus was one that was reclining at the table. That's a sermon all by itself right there, that the man that was dead has now got his feet kicked up at the table, but we'll save that for another day. Mary then took a pound of very costly perfume of pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, it's always somebody, you know, but, but Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, it, it was Jesus, folk, y'all, who was intending to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and given to poor people? Now, he said this not because he was concerned with the poor, but because he was a thief and he had the money box and he used to pilfer what was put into it. Therefore, Jesus said, let her alone so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For you always have the poor with you, but you do not have me always. With the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, dear Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. If you would, go with me to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Father God in heaven, it is indeed we are grateful for this day. We are grateful for this time. Lord, we can't get enough of your word. That's why we're gathered here this morning, because we need a word from you. Father, I pray that as we go through your word and as we search your word, Father, that this word will make an impact in our lives and that it will draw us closer into a saving relationship with you and help us to live those lives that you called for us to live. Father, there be someone among us that don't, does not know you as their Lord and Savior, Father, we pray that at the conclusion of the matter, that they would ask that question, what is it that they must do in order that their souls might be saved? And Father, if you do this for us, we'll be so ever mindful to give you the praise. It is in Jesus' name we pray that all those that love God say, amen. Amen. I thank, thank all of you for being here this uh, morning. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about a little thing called stewardship. Stewardship, stewardship. I would have you to know that each and every single one of us are managers. You didn't know it, but you are a manager. God has given each and every single one of us a little bit of something. I didn't say to own, but God has given you a little bit of something to manage. So if you recognize that God has given you something to manage and not to own, then you will recognize that everything that you have does not belong to you, but rather it belongs to who? It belongs to God. So I want to show you one of the most beautiful stories in the New Testament, I believe, in my opinion, in John chapter 12. And it says, then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus, who had been dead, who was now raised from the dead. There they made him a supper and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those that sat at the table with him. And then something happens, y'all. Mary took out a pound of very costly ointment, a spike nard, anointed the feet of Jesus, wiped his feet with her hair, and the house now, y'all, is filled with the smell of that fragrance. But one of the disciples, again, was upset. And uh, verse number six is important. It said, this he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box, and he used to take what was put in. But Jesus said, let her alone. This she has kept for the day of my burial. Now this story is a beautiful story and a lesson on two kinds of natures that can possess us. But more importantly, these are the two natures of God and Satan. Because I would have you to know that God has a nature of generosity. That's what he has. God is a generous God. Ain't he giving you stuff that you don't deserve? God is a generous God. And then on the other hand, Satan has a nature of selfishness. You know what? It's all about me. You know what? It's all about I. It's all about what you want. And there are two natures that we as human beings take on whether we know it or not. And they either have a generous nature or they become selfish in every aspect of their life. 
There's always this battle that's taking place. And what I love about the story is this woman was so moved that she did something that was beyond normal and that was beyond average. She brought an extravagant gift, an extraordinary gift, and she broke it open and poured it out on Jesus. Generosity, y'all, was flowing from a grateful heart. And, and in, Gen, in John chapter 12, verse number 6, Jesus said, Judah said, why did you give this to the poor? Now, this is important. It's important that he said that. And the Bible said that he said that not because he cared about the poor, but he was robbing. He was stealing from the treasury, and he was upset that they was being wasted on Jesus. I love the fact that this exposes the age-old cover-up that anybody who's doing anything for the Lord, building anything for the Lord, doing anything for the body of Christ, the selfish spirit criticizes that. And, and they're not going to do anything for the Lord, but people criticize people that are openly doing something for the Lord. I found out that people who give, and as the Bible talks about the term of tithing and give to the church, people that hear about giving don't get upset when they're already givers. It's going to get good in here this morning. It's kind of like going to the doctor for going to your physician for your annual physical. And you know what here? Press right there and here. Probe right there and here. Probe right there and here. Fill around and say, that. does it hurt right there? You'll say, no. Well, does it hurt right there? And then he'll touch you in a place. You'll say, oh, but that kind of. He said, well, did it hurt right there? Well, it's not really supposed to hurt right there. So, so let's keep on doing this. And we need to check further because it's not supposed to hurt when I probe right there. So when I get up and I preach on giving and I probe and I say this, if it hurt, it's not Dr. Peterson's fault. Because it's not supposed to hurt you right there. You're not supposed to feel uncomfortable right there. It's not supposed to get you on the edge of your seat right there because that's not supposed to be an issue. I'm just a doctor giving you the medicine. It's going to get fun. It's going to get fun. What's interesting to me about this story is that Jesus knew he had that spirit and he knew that he was a thief and still wanted him to keep the money back. Because he was testing him in the area of his weakness. You are being tested every day with what you do with your resources. And how can you be trusted with true riches the Bible said in the book of Luke chapter 16 that if you can't be trusted with unrighteous mammon, God will never give you spiritual authority. Listen to this. If you're not faithful with money, true riches, Jesus said, will never be trusted to you. And what are true riches? Influence with people and power with people. God will not give spiritual authority to anyone who cannot handle money. If you cannot handle unrighteous money, how will you commit and be true to true riches? What touched me about this story is generosity. The generosity that was in this woman's heart was so extraordinary. It challenged me personally when I was reading this because Judas called it a waste, but Jesus called it worship. It was so extraordinary, y'all, that it stunned Jesus. There was three levels of giving that were taught right here in the Bible. The first is what the Bible calls a tithe. You've heard what a tithe is. You know what that is. That's the first level. And then we call something, we talk about an offering. And, and, and then we talk about the offering. And then we're talking about just at free will offering. And, and these are the three types of offerings that we read about in the Bible. And you cannot give the second and the third level if we're not first of all giving on the first level. So he says, honor me with the first fruits of some of that increase. Of all of that increase. So if I made $1,000 a week, we're going to have a little math test right here. So if I made $1,000 a week, my tithe would be 
the hundred dollars. If I made five hundred dollars in a week, then the tithe out of that would be fifty dollars. If I had a bad week and I ain't make but a hundred dollars, y'all, then my tithe would be ten dollars. If I made one dollar, my tithe would be, I pray for you, ten cents. <laughs> and God says, I'll bless you. I'll open up the windows of heaven on 10 cents just as I would if you had a million and gave a hundred thousand. God says I'll open up the one. And if you ever want to get to the second level, we got to first of all do what we're supposed to command it to be doing in the first place. And that's biblical. He said, bring it into the storehouse. That's not plural. It's not 3% over here and 2% to this person and someone over here to this ministry. No, wherever you are a member at, that's where you sow into the ground. Because you gotta ask yourself, why are you somewhere that you don't believe is good ground in the first place? What do you do with that? We're talking about, as I mentioned, a free will offer. How much is a free will offer? Free will. <laughs> Whatever you want to give. Sometimes you might give that to the church. Sometimes you ever been out um, on a, on a uh, eating lunch or something like that, and your waitress is just so good, you just wanted to bless that person. So you say, you know what? I'm going to just give you a, a little something extra. That, that, that's an offering that you're giving to that individual. And then we have sometimes, uh, you may see someone in the house of God, and when you shake their hand, we give them what we call a, a holy handshake. You'll, you'll put a little something in your palm, and, and you'll shake that hand. That's an offering that you are giving to that individual. It's a free will offering, but then there's this other thing that I want to talk about this morning, where we get past the point of being proud because we gave our 10%. Because you shouldn't get to a place to where you are proud because you gave 10% because that's something you're supposed to be doing in the first place. But when you get to a place to where, where you don't get proud because you give, but you feel blessed because God allowed you to be able to give something. And since the Lord allowed me to be able to give this, whenever there's an opportunity for me to give more, I'm going to do that as well. So we're talking about, I say, a free will offer. So we give that, as I say, we give in, in many ways. And all along, God was saying, I, I want you to understand something, church. When you feel like it's the hardest to give, God still wants you to sacrifice yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we get to a place in our life, and, and, and this is all of us because I'm preaching from the pulpit to the back door, to where we align everything else and we have everything else going on in our life. And before we get what we're supposed to get, we already have it allocated. Okay, I'm going to do this over here. Okay, I want this, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to set aside because I want to do this. And then whatever's left over, I'm going to take a little bit out of that, and I'm going to give it to God. But you recognize that we've always had an issue with this. Because if you go back to Cain and Abel, that's where the problem arose from. Because there was one son that followed God, that obeyed God, and gave the offering that God desired for him to give. But then there was another going out there finding little rotten tomatoes and little spoiled cucumbers and all this kind of stuff. And trying to bring it before God as if God is going to be pleased with that. Well, let me ask you, church, if you can't make it out five dollars. How we think God is going to survive. Yeah. And then we got to recognize, church, that at the end of the day, the old saying goes like this. The greenback makes the horse strike. Right. We cannot do what we need to do unless everyone is giving as they should. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know we thought we was going to be shouting this morning and all that kind of stuff, but guess what? You in class this morning. I'm going to teach you what you need to hear. So church, watch this. Jesus is watching. And the Bible said the rich people are bringing gifts and he's watching and he's nodding and he's watching. And here comes this little widow woman 
with two mites, or in our day what we would call two pennies. She comes with these two pennies, y'all, and she drops it in. And Jesus is so moved by those two pennies that he stops the whole offering. And he says, she has done more than all of y'all put together with her two cents. Because the two cents that she gave was extraordinary. It's all that she had. Y'all, it's not the amount, but it's your heart. Tell somebody, it's not how much you give, but it's how you give it. So she come with these little two pennies. He said, she has done more than all of y'all. She could have said what so many said. Well, I ain't got a lot. I, I just can't give nothing. If I had more, then i do more. But if you won't do anything with what you have right now, how are you going to do something when you get a little bit more? You are either passing the test or failing the test with what you have right now. And if God can't trust us to give $30 a year, how is he going to trust us to give $3,000? Make it make sense. Make it make sense. So if he said, if you're a thief with $30, you'll be thief with $30,000. I didn't say it. God said it. Don't look at me like that. God said it. Did y'all just feel how the oxygen just left out this room? How we just... Am I preaching the word of God this morning? Is this in your Bible? You know, I read the other day as I was studying in Malachi chapter 3, since we're looking partly cloudy this morning, I'm going to teach you the word of God. Malachi chapter 3 and verse number 8, he said, you robbed me. And they said, Lord, when we robbed you, we stuck you up. How have we robbed you? And he said, you have robbed me in tithes. And in offerings. Notice it's different. I told you it's the tithes and offerings. I just throw it all together and God knows. No. We are already commanded to give of the first fruits of our increase. That's something we're supposed to do. So, and I read somewhere, you know what? God will cut a hole in your pocket. That's what the book, the book of Amos, God will cut a hole in your pocket. And you will wonder, when you don't give to God, and when you don't support the work of God, when you don't support the ministry, man, every time you turn around, you got a different doctor's appointment you got to go to, $100 copay, $200 copay. Every time you turn around, this guy going out, this guy going out, got to get a front end alignment, got to get a change on this, got to get a change on that. And God say, you know what? I'll make you spend every dime until you get to the place to where you get Give me what you're supposed to give me. Man, this truck shaking. Let me tell you, God knows just how to hit us. And a lot of times, you know what? Things happen to us and we just figure, you know what? It's just happenstance. It's just something that's going on. But can I tell you, if you'll get around sometime and just sit down, you'll recognize, hey, maybe God is trying to get my attention. He says, you robbed me. Not only y'all robbed me, y'all been ripping me off. He means... You're robbing me, God, of the opportunity to open up the windows. And I want to open the window. I want to pour you out a blessing. Guess what? I want to bless you so good that you can't keep it to yourself. But you got to go try to get you something. You get you something. You get you. I want to bless you so good, but a closed hand can't nothing go out. And can't nothing come in. So God says, by you not doing what you're supposed to do, you're stopping me from doing what it is that I desire to do in your life. I'm your father. I love to see you do well. Do you know God wants you to do well, church? 
God says that my heart's desire and prayer for you is that you would prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. God says, I want you to have favor. I want to open doors. I want to take you places. I want to use you for my glory. I want to bless your children and your children's children. God said, I ain't just thinking about right now. I'm thinking about generations down the line. Because if you read back in the Bible, it said that when Abraham paid his offerings, that his children were being blessed because of the offerings that he gave unto the Lord. So he said, I'm thinking about generations down the road, and I'm thinking so far, but you can't see until the next paycheck. And you are robbing me of that with your selfishness. You don't trust me for real. You're robbing me. What did he say you're robbing him of? of me opening the windows of heaven, pouring you out a blessing that you won't even have room enough to receive. He said, oh, you're robbing me of the ability. I want to rebuke the devourer for your sake. Yes. You know, it's pretty amazing, church. We get it so mixed up sometimes. You know, some of us, we got a Judah spirit and we don't even know it. We get that Judah spirit. What's that Judah spirit? You know what? All they want is some money. But you ain't giving, so how they want your money? They, they doing what they want to do. Well, you ain't giving them nothing to do it with, so what difference does it make? That is not why we're here. We are here, and we ought to come every first day of the week. If you ain't got but two pennies in your pocket, you ought to purpose yourself. On the first day of the week, if God been blessing me as good as God been blessing me, I'm living good, driving good, eating good. The least I can do is set something aside for the Lord. Y'all got better enough sense to go out, go on a splurge and shopping spree, spend every dime you got, then go up to the ATM trying to get some, and it say, up, oh, no, and you looking surprised. <laughs> oh, I know I had some. You know you ain't got nothing in there. So don't get mad at God when we are constantly begging and beseeching and asking him to do stuff when when you had it, you didn't remember him. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. I can't say man, but I can say ouch. Because that goes for every single one of us, church. God wants us to show him how much we love him. Not just in your singing. Not just in how loud you can say amen. But in your giving as well. You know that's a part of your worship. And, you, and guess what? You don't want God giving you half of a blessing, so why are you going to give God half of a blessing? You don't want God doing half steps and half ways in your life. Stop walking around where, well, you know, I would give it to God, but you know what? I, I, I got this certain thing that I want to do, and I got to do it. Well, you wouldn't be able to do what it is that you're doing had it not been for God blessing you, had it not been for God opening a door for you. So the least you can do is remember what it is that God has done in your life. Anybody here ever been down on your luck? Back up against the wind, didn't know how you was going to get out, but God gave you what you needed to get out and sustain. So when you get on top of that, you ought to remember the one that brought you out. You ought to remember the one. It's a sad frog that won't praise his own part. Somebody do something for you, ain't nothing wrong with telling him thank you. Let the Lord know how much you appreciate him. Lord, I wouldn't be able to drive this new car had you not blessed me. Oh, I'm going to say something that's going to hit all of us. I believe I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I believe I'm going to say it. We got stimulated this year, but the God didn't get stimulated. That was for us. 
That was for me to go get my hair did. That was for me to get that living room suit that I want. That was for me to go and do this and go and do that. But who you think gave you that stuff? It wasn't no president. It wasn't no government. It was the Lord God Almighty that put it in your hand. God, church, can do a lot with your little bit. You remember when the prophet went to the widow woman's house and he asked that woman, he said, you know what? What you got in your house? What? He said, the prophet said, what do you have? She, he said, said, guess what? I ain't got nothing save a pot of oil. And let me tell you, when you trust God with the little bit that you got, You'll be just like that widow woman because the Bible said that she got her son. And she told her, y'all go out, get every vessel that you can find. Go over there and get the neighbor's vessels. Go down the street and get some vessels and bring them in. And the Bible said she took that little pot of oil and then she began to pour that the oil never stopped flowing. That she just began to fill up little bitty pots and fill up pots until there were no more pots left. And the oil never dried up. Because she gave. She was willing to give church the little bit. She said, I ain't got enough for me and my children to eat this and that. But you know what? Because you say so, I'm going to give it. And let me tell you, you're going to have to get to the point to where your flesh said don't. The spirit say yes. You're going to have to get to the place to where the devil is in your mind. And he's trying to stop you from giving to God. He's trying to stop you from support. I know who woke me up this morning. I know who put food on my table. I know who's blessing me. So I got to bless him. We get it all mixed up and we'll, and we'll have that Judah spirit if we're not careful. But it's all about Christ and his kingdom church. That's who we live for. He is our savior. That is what should matter to us. God can ask us for the extraordinary. Why can he ask us for the extraordinary? Because he gave us the extraordinary. He gave us the extraordinary through his son, Jesus Christ. But I want you to see something. This is a big point. And if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. That a generous heart comes from a grateful heart. A generous heart comes from a grateful heart. Watch this. Come. It's a, it, but I want you to lead it. A generous heart always comes from a grateful heart. Don't ever expect people to be generous that are not grateful. Yeah. Now why in John chapter 12 would a woman take a year's worth of her wages, a bottle of perfume that costs one year's income, and break it open? And pour it out like it was warm. Now John said in John chapter 11 says on his feet. But if you read Mark chapter 14. It says that she poured it on his head. And his feet and his body. Why would she do that? With one year's wages y'all. This is a real story. Why would she do that? A generous heart always comes from a grateful heart. In order to understand the act of extraordinary worship in John chapter 11 or John chapter 12, you got to back up to John chapter 11 where you'll recognize what happened in John chapter 11. She had a brother by the name of Lazarus and he was dead and had been dead for three days and Jesus came to the grave and he stood and said, roll that stone away and they rolled the stone away and Jesus said Lazarus come forth and I love the next verse and the Bible said that he that was bound hand and foot in grave clothes and his face wrapped up in cloth Jesus said loose him and let him go guess who that was y'all that was her brother that was her brother listen he was dead but he's been 
been raised from the dead. Y'all ain't got that. And I wouldn't advise you to drive home by yourself. If the Lord has made a way for you, and if the Lord has done things in your life, there's nothing too extraordinary that you can't give to God. So, in John 11, she's seen her dead brother raised from the dead. And you say, well, I guess I would have I did a little bit something too if God did a miracle for me and my family. You were dead in your trespasses and in your sins. Your children were dead in their trespasses and in their sins. They were on their way to a devil's hell. But God saved you. He saved you. Now I want you to get what's taking place. Because she's so moved that approximately a month later, because I know I didn't read it, but read John 12 where it talks about that Lazarus is at the table with Jesus. The dead man that was raised got his feet kicked up, y'all. Uh, they got his feet kicked up, eat good. And she's so moved at the picture of Jesus sitting at the table with her once dead brother that he's been raised and given back his life that she just couldn't take it. She, I got to find me something. I got to find the, the best thing that I got. I can't give God no little raggedy something. I got to find the best thing that I got and it ain't too much for my God. So she seen a dead brother raised from the dead. And I don't want you to get because she's moved from that church and again, as I said, a generous heart always comes from a grateful heart. And she's so moved with gratitude. She was in the kitchen cooking, y'all. She threw her apron down and said, Martha, you cook these greens by yourself. I got to go out here and I got to worship my God. You stand here and you keep on cooking. I got to go get my one year wages appointment. I've got to do something extravagant because I'm so grateful for what the Lord has done in my life. Listen to them laugh. Listen, look, can you hear the folk in the background? Listen to Lazarus. And Jesus telling stories and kicking back and eating good and enjoying a meal. And all of a sudden, in the middle of all of that, she just comes up and she breaks open this bottle. And y'all, while she breaks open the bottle, this woman is weeping and she's worshiping her creator. She's worshiping. Put yourself on your knees in her position right now. She's on her knees and she's worshiping her father. And while she's worshiping, Judas is criticizing. He's sitting over there with the attitude. And Jesus says something profound. Leave her alone. Because she is anointing me for my burial. Now here's what's interesting. Jesus, right at this point, is only six days from being crucified when this story happens. And when she started anointing, according to Mark chapter 14, his head and his feet, she was doing, she had no idea what her extraordinary offering was going to do for the body of Christ. She poured it out on him, y'all. Six days later, he would die on Calvary. And they would take that body down quick because the Passover was coming in and they had to be done. The Sabbath was coming. And they had to be done. And normally when someone was crucified, if it was a Jew, they would anoint them for the burial on spot. But they didn't have time. They didn't have time. So they had to rush and put him in there unprepared. How do you know they didn't anoint him? Because the Bible says early Sunday morning, three days later, that the exact day actually after he was crucified, the women came with spices to anoint his body. But on the third day, 
he was already risen. Praise God! He was already risen. When they were bringing in the spices, what I'm saying to y'all is, she had no idea that she was anointing the body of Jesus. She had no idea that she was anointing his body. And that he was anointed to raise the dead. She put it on his body, y'all. She had buried him. She had anointed him for his burial. And so when he stepped out of that tomb, the anointing that was a, a part of that gift that woman had given to him. And we have no idea when you come into the kingdom of God how that gift, that extraordinary offering and gift that we give in sacrifice to God. You have no idea how God will ultimately cause souls to be impacted by the offering that you give. Every time we tell the story, the gospel story, we have to remember this one. Because it was her anointing gift of the extraordinary that was on Jesus' body. She is forever associated with the gospel. And I tell you this, generosity is not always flows from a grateful heart, but generosity, church, is always rewarded by God. I say it's always rewarded by God. He will, Hebrews 11 said he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Did he reward that woman? Did he give us something for our trouble? The Bible said, Jesus said, listen at this. Wherever the gospel is preached, I want them to talk about this woman. Lord, why do you want us to talk about this woman? Why do you want us to talk about her? She gave what she could. That's why I want you to remember. Because she gave what she could. She gave what she had, church. And Jesus said, I want them to make a memorial out of her. And I want you to recognize, church, this morning, that you are not giving for no reason. You are not giving, should not be just out of practice or just out of something you feel like you have a sense of duty. But you ought to give because you have so much to be grateful for. You got so much to be thankful for. I don't know your business, but guess what? You got a lot to be thankful for. You got enough to walk around for the rest of your days with a smile on your face. You got enough to walk around for the rest of your days with a praise on your mouth because of what God has done in your life. Anybody can say, man, I can look from where I was raised up to where I came up and I can look at the things that I had to go through. But now, man, God has blessed me to get to a place to where I ain't got to worry about what I'm going to eat, but I can choose what it is that I want to eat. I ain't got to just, just decide on a place that I want to live, but I can choose where it is that I want to live because God has blessed me because God has opened doors for me and since he blessed me like that I got to bless him let me tell you church we serve a God as the scripture says that will open up I didn't say a door the windows and pull you out a blessing that you won't even have room enough to receive. And I want you to pay attention to that because he didn't say blessings with the S. So he didn't say, I'm going to just give you a whole bunch. God said, I'm going to give in this one thing that I'm going to do in your life is going to be enough to keep you. God said, I will sustain you off this one if you will be faithful to me. But this is a challenge for all of us yes, sir. to get to a place mm -hmm. to where we give sacrificially. Yes. There's a lot of things I'm sure that each and every single one of us as members would like to see. Mm -hmm. Would like to see done, would like to see operated. Your car went off, good wishes and hope. No, <laughs> gotta have some trouble. Gotta have some in. 
if we want the kingdom of God to advance and to go forward and to be able to do X, Y, and Z, we're going to have to support those efforts. We're going to have to support those efforts if we want it to happen. I don't see no trees around here that I can go and pick. They got hundred dollars. If you know where it's at, show me. I want to know where it's at. I need to go pick some off of it. But God has blessed each and every single one of us, church. And I wish we would have the heart of the first century church. Because if you look at the first century church, after all those people had been saved and come to know who Jesus was, the Bible says that when it was time to give, that they would go, and a lot of times they had money, they, they would bring what it was that they had, and they would come, and the Bible says they would lay it at the apostles' feet. And the apostles would distribute it unto the people as they had need. That, that's why we had the offering today, what we do for the food bank, so we can distribute that stuff to the people that are in need. So we be real, some of us be in need sometimes. Now, be real with yourself. Be real with yourself. And that's why you can praise God. That's why you can praise God because you can remember a time when you was in line trying to get something, but now you in line trying to give out something. Praise God. And you can thank God because you recognize you did not secure that for yourself. It was God. Because if we had control of it, we'd never be broke. <laughs> if we had control over it, we'd never be, oh, man, I can't wait for Friday to get here. You know, I'm, I can't wait. We'd never be in that place if it was up to us. Yeah. And I want us to remember, never get to a place to where we feel like we own something. Yeah. Everything that you got, you're just managing it for a little while. Yeah. It ain't yours. It don't belong to you. You just hold it on to it for a little while. Amen. And after a while, God going, hey, you know, you know, we live this life and, and we put so much faith and stock in our possessions and the things that we have only to leave here for people to fight over. Yeah. I want that lamp. I always like that lamp she had. Well, you know, I like that blue dress you had. Let me get that blue dress. Like, well, you know, I always like that suit you had. Like, let me get that suit. It ain't yours. Amen. Leave stuff behind. How many of y'all have ever seen a U-Haul carrying behind a purse? It is certain that we brought nothing into this world. And guess what? You ain't going to take nothing out. The same way that we came in. It's the same way that we're going to go out. But while we're here, let's be a blessing to somebody. Let's be a blessing to somebody. Let's be a blessing to our Creator, to our Father. Why? Because you got so much to be thankful for. You hadn't always been sister and brother, so and so. You was a mess at one point in your life. Somebody said, Preacher, I'm still a mess. That, that's all right. God's still working on you. That's all right. We all still a mess. If you're still a mess, raise your hand. If, if you're still a mess and God is still working on you, so don't be ashamed. Man, I raise, I'm with we, we all a mess. Lord, I need you to work on me from the root to the, from the top to the bottom. I need you to work on me. <laughs> I need him to work on me. Why? Because the devil, it ain't no matter but him, might bring an infomercial up in men's warehouse, got suits on sale for him. such and such it is for this amount. And that's the man I'm supposed to be giving to God. And I say, well, I want the suits. I can give it to God the next time. That's the devil. Well, well, you know, well, you know what? I, I, I want to do this. I, I was, I had said that I was going to give to God, but I know I seen this purse that you already got a hundred purses in your closet that you don't wear. And, and, and I seen this bag, and I just got to get it. And after you get that bag, you ain't got twenty dollars left, and you got to use that twenty dollars for gas the next week until you get your next. So you ain't got nothing for God. It ain't nothing but the devil. The devil wants to affect you in every area of your life. And if he can stop you from giving, he can stop you from being blessed. 
if he can close up your hand, what's going in? What's coming out? Pro circulation. <laughs> ain't that right, Doc? Pro circulation. Ain't that coming in? And ain't that going out? Let me tell y'all. I want. I, let me tell. I want to live so God can bless me. Amen. And I want to live so God can bless me. And I say that not meaning that I've always gave like I'm supposed to. Because we got to be real with ourselves. We don't always do as we should. But we got to challenge ourselves to get to a place to where we're simply reminded of what God has done in our life. And if you remember what he's done for you, you won't be ashamed to give to him. You won't be proud to give to him. You won't be too, too, too stubborn to support the work of God when you remember what it is that he's done in your life. Because you can think about it, man, there was a time I was getting front up from folk and they was coming to knock on my door and I knew they was knocking. I just didn't go to the door. And folk was calling me and stuff like that. I just didn't have the money to give them. There was a time in my life when I was riding and Lord, the gas needed. I didn't know it could go that low. I, can't, I didn't know it could get that down low. And, and you know, there was a time when I, when, when I just had to make them part of public wheelers. Y'all remember them? I had to make them last. You know what? You know, I had to break them up into some beans, maybe some beans. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't act like you ain't never ate beanie weenies and, and pumpkin beans and, and sardines and spam. What y'all know about that? Don't act like you ain't never, don't act like you always been eating crab legs and, and lobster and steak and all. You've been down on your luck. You had your back up against the wind, but God has brought you to another place. And because he blessed me like that, I got a duty to bless him. I got a duty to reward him for what he's done for me. And I'm not giving, looking for God to give me something back. I know he's going to do it. But you ought not give with the heart. Okay, well, I'm going to put this 30 in here. I'm looking for 300 to come from somewhere next week. Go to work, you'll get it. Yeah, go to work, you'll get it. Well, uh, you know, I'm you know, I'm putting this $20 in there. I just know $200 is going to pop up somewhere. I ain't going to get you in there next time, you know. And here it is, because I don't think a lot of us have ever had the right heart towards giving. Because sometimes we give with that mindset looking for something to come right back. And when it don't come right back, you get mad at God. And then you and the devil get, that ain't nothing but the devil getting in your mind. And, and, and then he calls you withhold what it is that you want to give from God. But guess what? If he don't ever give me what it is that I wanted, he's still giving me everything that I need. He's still blessing me with things that I do not deserve. Every time I put a price on it. Every time I put a price on it. Every time. Put a price. You can't put a price on it. And let me tell you, you can't beat God giving. No matter how hard you try, you better get your little hundred dollars, and I say little hundred dollars. Because what is a little hundred dollars compared to health and strength? What is what you give compared to having your right mind? What is what you give compared to when you were sick and laying in a hospital bed and God healed your body? What is that compared to that? We have to get to a place to where we're just like that woman. Nothing is too much for God. Nothing is too much. And just like you want the best for yourself, you ought to want the best for God. You want your house to look good, right? Yeah. God's house ought to be the same way, church. And if we truly care about God, and if we truly care about saving souls, if we truly care about reaching the lost, we're going to support that effort. We're going to be a part of that effort because we want it to be advanced. Simple things. We like to come here and have nice air conditioning, don't you? Y'all yeah. yeah, don't want to be up in here sweating bullets. No. You see every one of them lights? Yeah. That's a bill. Yeah. That, that, that cool yeah. air that we got come feel good, don't you? Yeah. That's a bill. Yeah. <laughs> that, well, 
how we're able to live stream and people over the country, around the world, are able to see us. You know what that is? And if you don't pay it, it's going to get cut off. So we got to support the work of God. We got to support the kingdom of God. And we got three more weeks of this, so get ready. So we got to. We got to get to a place to where we don't hold back from God. Because how many of y'all want God to hold back from you? Lord, I want God to bless me so good. Let me tell you, I, I pray these kind of prayers. I don't know about y'all, but I, I pray prayers not just for now, but for down the road. I said, Lord, get me in a place where you can bless me so good. That Marissa, one day, when our great-grandchildren, after we dead and gone, when our great-great-great-grandchildren got a picture of us on the fireplace, that they'll look at that picture and say, thank God for Mama and Papa. <laughs> and why are they going to say that? Because they set us up to be blessed. And you know, in our culture, we don't really have that attitude. We don't set our children and families up. We had to struggle, so we want them to struggle to come up as well. But we ought to set our people up so that they can be blessed. Set them up so that they can be blessed. And let me tell you, church, we've already said, when you give to God, let me tell you, he'll give back to you. How are you going to give it back? Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. How many of y'all ever took a, a Coca-Cola bottle? And you shake that joke up real good, and you take the top off, it's just gonna go everywhere. That's exactly how press down, shake it together, run it over. Shall me and get into your bosom. Let me tell you, I'm a living witness that when you be faithful to God, God will be faithful to you. Things that you don't qualify for, God will qualify you for. Things that you ain't never about able to get, God will make you capable to be able to get it. When you trust him, God, I ain't got much. You already know it's what you gave me. Lord, I ain't got much. But you know what? With the little bit that I got, it's yours. I'm going to trust you with it. I'm going to trust you. Why wouldn't you trust a man that owned the cattle on a thousand years? The silver, the gold, they all belong to him. So if he owned all that, I ain't never broke. Yeah. If my father owns all of that, I ain't never want for nothing. Because my father is rich in houses and land. Yeah. And all power is in his hands. Yeah. And whatever you need, church, I want you to know God got it. He got it. He got it, he got it in his possession. But do you have yourself in position to get what it is that God got? Yeah. And again, again, how you gonna get something in when can't nothing get out? Yeah. I remember a story in the Bible where it talked about a man that owed a great, great debt. And it was time, came time for him to pay that debt. Uh -huh. And he owed that man some, probably a million dollars. And he went to that man he just begged that man so much. Say, you know, oh, please, please give me, please, uh, uh, I, 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 forgive me. Forgive this debt. Forgive me. And he said that that man had compassion on him. And he forgave his debt. And, and then the Bible says that there was a woman that owed him a little bit of money. Notice I said a little bit of money. Wasn't that compared to what he owed? And he went out there, grabbed up by the neck. Give me my money. Was getting rough with the give me my money. And had a fool jail for the little bit yeah. that she owed for it. Then the man heard about it. He right. right. said, how are you going to be going out here yeah, yeah. doing all of this? Yeah, yeah. And I forgave you of your debt. Yeah. All of that debt. Yeah. Let me tell you, church. All of us in here owe the debt. Yeah. Yeah. Every single one of us yeah. owe the debt. And neither one of us could pay it off. Every single one of us had a balance that was long overthrown. But God brought it up to date for us. He paid the price so that you wouldn't have to suffer for it. He laid down his life for a payment. 
Notice I didn't say a down payment, but a payment. He paid it in full, once and for all, God paid it. He paid that debt for you so that you wouldn't have to die and go to a devil's hell. But that if you remain faithful unto him, that one day you receive a crown of life that will never be away. And let me tell y'all, church, you know what? We don't have to wait until we die to be blessed. No. We can be blessed now if we'll live how it is that God has called for us to live. And then don't be fooled because God ain't the only person that can give you some stuff. That's a different sermon. But you know what? That's, don't be surprised with some of the stuff. And we sometimes people walk around and they covet and they look after this and they want this that other people have. How do you know how they got that? What means did they use to attain that stuff that they got? You don't know what people selling and what people doing to get what they get. So we can't be look, we're looking at one stuff that other people have. But whatever state you find yourself, as Paul said, learn therein to be content. And if you learn to be thankful and content with what God has given you, and if he can trust you with what he's given you, guess what? He can trust you with a little bit more. My brother and my sister, maybe you're here today, maybe you're watching us, and you at this time are not a Christian. You're not a member of the body of Christ. We urge you this day to make your decision for Jesus. Um, this is the greatest invitation <coughs> that can ever be offered to any individual, and that is the invitation to come and to have Jesus as the head of your life. Yes. My brother, my sister, I'm so glad that he thought enough of us not to leave us out on the auction block of slavery. Amen. But while we were out there and Satan was getting ready to sell us off to the highest bidder, he came and he paid the debt. Yes. He Amen. came and he brought us back. He came and he sufficed the debt so that you and I could live, but not just live, but to live more abundantly. So my brother and my sister, you're here today, maybe you're watching us. You're not a member of the body of Christ. I urge you today. You've heard the word of God, uh, Romans chapter 10 and verse number 17. So then faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You've heard the word. Now my question is, do you believe what it is that you've heard? If you believe what it is that you've heard, are you now willing to confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord of all, that he is Lord. And after confession, be willing to repent of your sins. What is repentance? I change my mind, and it's going to show up in the way that I live. It's going to show up in the way that I act. It's going to show up in the way that I conduct myself. And now that I've done that, I'm willing to join my Savior in the watery grave of baptism, have my sins washed away, done away with, never to come before me in this life, and neither the life that is to come. And according to the word, praising God, having favor with all the people, the Lord adds to the church daily, such as should be saved. So if you want to come on a Monday, guess what? Come on a Monday. You want to come on a Wednesday, guess what? Come on a Wednesday. Today that you hear his voice. Lord, not your heart. My brother, my sister, maybe you're here today. You're already a member of the body of Christ, but you're standing in the need of prayer. Maybe you're a person that said, preacher, you know what? I've been given, but I have not been given like I'm supposed to, and I know it, and I want God to strengthen me to be able to give like I'm supposed to. That's an honest prayer. That's an honest prayer that we all need on this morning. So my brother and my sister, if you're here today, you're subject to the invitation. I urge you, take this opportunity. Come to Jesus now. As together we stand and sing the song of invitation. Hallelujah.